Oi, hello there, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation. It's Jamie Clough Gaming here, and this is part 40, and we have reached level 29. Let's. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to be. No distractions there. <laughs> um. And uh, we've just completed what I deem to be the hardest level of the game, which is underneath the Sphinx. And literally half the level is spent in that water maze. What's the water maze? Maybe it would be an easier level, but it still would not be easy <clears throat> or straightforward anyway. So, don't get me wrong though. Um, I still enjoy it. I'm not sure whether it's my favourite level. Uh, well, let's put some, let's put some music on because, of course, um, my voice sounds funny. <laughs> it does that occasionally. No, YouTube, I'm already signing you. I've indeed. I've, <coughs> I've got two bros on as usual. Right. And. Uh, yeah. So this level. Menkara's Pyramid. It's a good job I checked the level name because I've actually forgotten what this level was called temporarily. But yeah. You realise that guy. That, the guy that we were coming across. You save his life, he's called Menkara. And. Um, or you can choose to let them die. Either way, you will get the guard's keys, which is a highly useful um, set of keys you will need to complete the game to all these pyramids and stuff. And uh, you can either choose to let them die or save them. If you let them die, you get what you need to complete the level and the game. But you don't get your what you want. You have to save his life. And if you save his life, get a cutscene. Oh, right, thanks. You. And he gives you the guard's keys. And he gives you a bonus key. That key, the silver key, is a secret. Is a key for a secret. That will be a secret in a later level. So you're going to want to save him if you want all secrets. It's a bit sneaky, that. It is a bit sneaky. And if you're first time player, no way of knowing this, unless you have the strategy guide. Um, but that is quite sneaky. They, they, they block you off from a secret if you don't save them. And the only way to do it is because uh, reloading the game from an earlier save. Um, so just bear that in mind. These, these are giant scorpions. I spoil the fact that they were giant scorpions several parts back. These are just, just giant versions of the ones in the tomb set that the, the same texture, just made a lot bigger. And of course, in sets active, he will make ordinary scorpions into giant monster scorpions and send them to kill Lara and kill all our allies, which is Lara and John Eve. John Eve recently went back to Alexandria. Now it's just between Lara and Von Croy, and Von Croy's men, of course. And these giant scorpions. Also, there are soldiers in these levels, and they are friendly towards Lara. They won't attack you. Um, um, however, if you accidentally shoot them while trying to save them, they will turn on you. It's the same philosophy as the other friendly, so-called friendly enemy, friendly guys in Tomb Raider 2 and 3, where if you if you shot them, they would no longer be friendly. Even if it was accidentally friendly fire, they'd all turn on you. So it's the same logic in Tomb Raider 4 with these soldier guys. Most of the time, the scorpions will kill most of them. So, <laughs> um, and if they do turn on you, they're outmatched by Laura's weapons arsenal. Quite frankly, she's got grenade guns with super ammo. Well, five different grenades per thing, and they can blow them all bits. But um, 
because if you don't accidentally fire at them, it won't be a problem. So, so it's best not to try and save them from the scorpions. It's best to let them fight the scorpions out. If they manage to survive, they manage to survive. But some of them do drop ammo if the scorpions kill them. So you, so you might want the scorpions to win. <laughs> most of the time they do when you get extra items, it's a bonus. You're not really going to need all the extra items you get because you've got quite a lot of items by this point. It's near the end of the game. If you've been wise with your medipacks and flares, which it's not always easy to do, to be frank. And I could have... I've been relatively okay with medipacks, but I could have been significantly wiser, for instance. I probably could have had about 10 or 11 more small many packs than I do, for instance. And about 5 more large many packs. It doesn't matter because I've still got enough to comfortably see Lara through the rest of the game. And it does niggle at you when you don't play as well as you could have done. Um, I was never going to rifle part of games or Stella Loon, but. Um, <laughs> when you've done a good job, you actually do feel good when you've got the best of yourself. Um, same with any task you do, really. Well, that's a <laughs> when I've done a good job in this kind of thing, yeah, I've done a good job. You see the man died, and then you get revolver ammo. However, you will also come across uh, Von Croy's men in these levels, and they are Obviously, bad guys, Von Croy's man, they'll try and kill you. They're working for Werner Von Croy. They're not a problem by this point. You know how to kill them, you know how to get rid of them. You even keep them alive for the hell of it, and there wouldn't be that much of a threat. It's just the numbers of them that, that makes them threatening when there's like several of them rather than one or two. So. <laughs> yeah, the revolver is really good at taking out the giant scorpions. Is the grenade gun which could blow them up a bit. Super ammo is recommended, and you blow them to smithereens um, very quickly as well. They only use about two shots from the super ammo of the grenade gun. So, if you've been wise and conserved the explosive ammo for these guys, um, and that's fantastic. And I suppose it's like mini bosses, uh, so much more of a threat than ordinary scorpions were in the first part of the game, so and they can poison you, all of them poison you whereas when you first come across the small scorpions they weren't poisonous then you come across the black variety later on the jet black variety, which were poisonous <clears throat> but still very small, they were slightly bigger than the other ones they were still too small, they really present a major threat to Lara but if you do get poisoned you've got no choice, you do have to heal eventually but the cool thing about Tumor 4 is when you're poisoned, Lara's vision goes funny. You think there's a fault, but it's just Lara's vision. You're seeing through her eyes, and her vision goes all um, loopy like you're on drugs. It's really a cool feature, to be frank. Uh, honest, and uh, <clears throat> occasionally you might want to leave these scorpions alive. They do actually hunt the stag beetles and sting them to get death, so they'll actually hunt the stag beetles. For you, so to speak. I've seen them do this as well, so I know this. Um, it's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's annoying little beetles. They're big beetles, of course. But they're really whingy and annoying. Uh, look, there's one over there. I haven't activated him yet, so he's just stuck there. At the moment. But yeah, you can climb the pyramid. You can choose to climb the pyramid straight away. But you don't have the guard's keys, so you won't be able to go in it until you get the guard's keys, obviously. Or I can't kick the door down or something like that. <laughs> well, that would be funny, actually. Didn't kick the door down. Didn't. But then again, you'd miss the secret, so you'd, you'd be cheating yourself out of um, getting the secret. And Laura isn't a god, she's only human, believe it. So <clears throat> she's a strong woman, but. If she was a god, she'd have blasted the doors on with more keys. Probably, you know. Probably. But, uh... uh then you've got to let the beetle fly near the scorpion. And the scorpion will actually chase him. <laughs> However, if the beetle does not do that, the scorpion probably won't see him, so... It's a little bit irritating. You can't always get what you want to happen with these things. Hmm. <sighs> 
And then if he goes near the scorpion, the scorpion actually will attempt to kill him. Oh yeah, obviously, even in Africa you don't get appeals and scorpions that size. This is just because Set has, um, has unleashed his hell. He's harsh unleashed his fury until you trap him. Then when you trap him, I guess, the scorpions turn back to normal size. So do the beetles, but, um, but Revolver is good. <laughs> oh my god, it's not the same beetles that... The English rock band. It's a completely different species of people. Oh. Not just ripping off someone else who shot for like 10 years ago now, let's play. Yeah, well, yeah, but the pet ferret was pretty much the first um, English let's play, let's play to him in four. And, he, and that's why he's got all these. an amazing number of views for his. And um, because before. There were Let's Plays, but they were in German. Germany got there first, for some reason. And uh, obviously, you don't understand German, you won't be able to understand what they're saying, obviously. <laughs> um, so it wasn't until really 2010 that the British Let's Plays began Let's Playing Tumor 4, which is unusual because YouTube had been out for five years then, um, and the game's from 1999, so you'd, you'd have thought. I thought they would have been doing some sort of Let's Plays themselves didn't exist till about 2007. Um, for three years before English people began, English speaking people began Let's Playing the original Tomb Raider games. So if they were doing it 10 years ago, we'll, we'll get the lion's share of views. You do it now. Nope. <laughs> the views have gone, it's been done, but it has been done. And uh, it's been done by. People have got more subscribers naturally than I'll ever have. If I was to get more subscribers than them, it's because I bought them. And uh, if, if I come into money, I will be buying some subscribers because I can't be done with having such a low number. <laughs> I want to even the odds out. And of course, they're probably furious to learn that some, some nobody has managed to buy all these subscribers and make their channel bigger than theirs. But, uh, if they've got a problem, they're going to have to confront me themselves. Um, <laughs> honestly, I don't think they'd give a shit, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter how much subscribers you got. What matters is you're doing something you want to do and you enjoy it, of course. Because if you don't want to do it, slash don't enjoy it, you probably shouldn't be doing it unless you make money from it. In which case, that's the reason you're doing it. So it's very hard to make money on YouTube anyway, <laughs> unless you get millions and millions and millions of views. And even the money you make from million, it takes a lot to get even just an average wage. So it's a bit of a Swiss YouTube. Uh, there's no money in it really when you think about it. Uh, there should be. What do you think? Oh, for thousands of views are very sure. At least a penny per view, you know, but uh, no, it doesn't work like that. And indeed, you can't earn money off videos unless you set them to monetize. If they haven't been set to monetize, and they've got all, every view they're going to get, then you set them to monetize, they're not going to make any money because they've already got the views they've got. You're not going to make any money at all. So you'd have had to monetize it from the start, but you didn't know that it was going to be popular, so you didn't know that it'd make any, so you can't win really. Unless you're really popular and you can get millions of views every video and you know monetize all of them. But the problem is with that you have to make original content as well. Technically Let's Plays are original, is your commentary, but they are allowed. But if you make money from them, um, I'm not sure that is allowed. It just depends. If you make a little bit, maybe. Well, the game makers will be like, like Square Enix won't be very happy if they start making money from these, for instance. They probably want to cut the profits, for instance. But, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Look, this Let's Play is not even going to worry the smallest company on earth. Never mind Square Enix, who got bigger Final Fantasy back in the day and uh, 
No, they um, they're involved with Tomb Raider, and so, they're not the developers, though. They're the publishers. Um, that, that means, of course, that they do all the marketing of the game once it has been developed by Crystal Dynamics slash Eidos Montreal, who have also been developing it. But, uh, which confuses me a bit because Eidos, we just know as publishers, not Eidos Montreal are also co developers with Crystal Dynamics on the latest games, but. Uh, like I said, they don't make them like too much for any. Um, so, even if, uh, I'd actually recommend this to virtually anyone who's even remotely interested in video games. Because even if they're not a big fan of Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 4 is the one that'll get them hooked on Tomb Raider because it's just so awesome. I'm not just saying it's the first Tomb Raider game I played back in 2000. And then, of course, we had to get all five of them. <laughs> then by December 2000, I played all five PlayStation Tomb Raiders. But Chronicles, when it first came out, and that's the, first, the only one that we got when it was new. Um, I haven't said that. I played Angel Darkness the year after it came out. And of course, we got Legend. I got Legend when it was new as well. It was sort of my birthday present in March 2006, but <laughs> oh my god, it was sort of. And for some reason, when you fire a scorpion in the cutscene, you get pistols. Up. Oh, shot now. Yep, that's main cover, and that pyramid up there is his pyramid, apparently. So he gives you the keys. And, um, if, he, if the scorpion had killed him, when he dies, those keys appear anyway. But the armory key doesn't, so you got to save him, and then he'll give you the armory key as well. And as the name would suggest, yeah. The secret that you get is weaponry, it's guns and stuff that you've already collected by this point, but it gives you a lot more, a bit more supplies. You don't necessarily need it at this stage of the game if you've conserved your ammunition, but if you're going for all secrets, of course you need to get that key. And um, that secret is a good few levels away yet, actually. It's, it's not even in this level, and... Uh, um, yeah, it's a good few levels away, yeah. At least three or four levels time before you actually get to use that key and access the secret. But if you... You can go in the room where it is, and the door will be shut if you don't get the key. There's no way of opening it. Of course... The only way you could obtain the key in that case is to press the cheats in. Then cheat for it, and I don't know... I would assume that you can cheat for it. Uh, the, um, the all items cheat, but I'm not sure whether the armor key, whether the, whether the armor key will show up because it's like a secret key that's not part of the main adventure. It ought to show up, oughtn't it? If you miss that, but as I say, if you miss it the first time, the only way to obtain it is by cheating for it. <clears throat> um, I guess when I used to press the cheat, it did appear. But it's been so many years since I did press the cheats in, like, you're talking several years ago, so I can't remember exactly whether you've got the armory key or not. But I'm presuming you can't cheat for it if you miss it the first time. So, and that would be the only way to get the secret, if you miss it, via not saving him. So, um, and I believe if you just let him die, you don't get any cutscenes. You just get his um, guard's keys. So the armory key, it really is worth saving him to get that armory key. Even if it's just like... 
an extra thing you don't necessarily like, need you do on the grid completely, can we? You'd want this to get the safer and put some extra ammunition by your grenade gun and so on, so. Not that you don't already have enough ammunition for it. <laughs> well, the gun that I lack ammunition for is the Uzi, which is a shame because I, I like using it. Um, that's my only complaint with the skin. In Tomb Raider 1, they absolutely overloaded you with Uzi ammo. <laughs> it, it, you had a lot more than you ever actually needed to use, even for the boss fight. It was a giant. Um, uh, that, that monster you fight at the end of the game, like, that torso boss is what you call it. And um, yeah, what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to shimmy across. And I was trying to jump across like a retard. And actually, all you need to do is shimmy across. You had to jump across to get there. In fact, you probably could just shimmy across there, because that's always been a. But to get back, you absolutely have to shimmy across this other way back. And. Now, we can climb this pyramid again, and we will have full access. And when you go through the door, that's the end of the level. So this level, quite short in all honesty. <laughs> only about 25 minutes it took me. And I went for the secret, the only secret in the level, which was the revolver. You would have seen me get that. And... Um, of course, by this point, you will already have the revolver. You could not have progressed without it to get to the level set. Like the trenches that required the revolver to destroy the center guns so you make progress. And, uh, of course, what happens when you get a gun that you've already got? You get ammunition. But note that you have to pick it up to register the secret. Whereas, with most secrets in this game, you have to go in the area and then the secret will register. You don't need to pick the item up. <laughs> so, for example, that spinning blade area, if you just want to register the secret rather than go the bother of getting the items, all you have to do is go in the area and then register the secret and come out again. So that would be useful for speedrunners who also are going for the secret, who don't need the pickups that you need to activate the secret. Whereas with the revolver, you, s you have to pick it up to activate the secret. And I like the fact that Tomb Raider 4 is pretty much the only Tomb Raider that has both the pickup secrets and the activation secrets. And uh, I think it is, um, because in Tomb Raider 3, all of the secrets are activation. In Tomb Raider 2, all of the secrets will pick up dragons. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in neither one of those games, I don't think. Even in the... the bonus levels of Tomb Raider 2, the PC only, uh, iOS only levels. Um, the secrets are different in that. And that came out in 1998, a few years off the game. Oh, actually, it came out in 1999 because Tomb Raider came out in So The expansion came out in 1999. And with Tomb Raider 1 expansion, that came out in 98, two years after Tomb Raider 1 and 96. Also, the expansion for Tomb Raider 3, which was the last of the expansions, it came out in 2000, two years after Tomb Raider 3. So. But they were PC only back then, um, and the Tomb Raider 3 one still is, unfortunately, because I've explained that guy had his he he got banned from remastering the games by Square Enix. He got a cease and desist letter. He was forced to stop doing what he was doing. It was real. The fans, I was absolutely flabbergasted when I found out because. I would have loved to play all five games on the iPad and I can only play one and two and it's a bit of a like why did Square Enix approve the first two games of the first one so they're just gonna turn the back on them eventually. They could have made a lot of money out of that. The money out of them goes to Square Enix anyway. Ah Did I not pick the revolver up before? Right. So the guard's keys you need, the armory key, is an optional bonus. But if you want the secrets, you're going to want to pick that up. Um, yeah, and I died there and I had to get a secret again. But I love the secret noise in Chamber 4. 